what up? So today I'm gonna show you guys how to DIY one of these melty rugs. At least I I, I hope I can make it work. Look at look at me go. sponsored by Squarespace so because the rugs are like so 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 very trendy right now I'm kind of amazed that this guy Faye Ahmed isn't just blowing up he makes these absolutely crazy rugs where it looks like they're melting this one reminds me of like the old screensavers for ooh, I think Dells I can't remember but I really want to recreate one of these and do it kind of look like it's just melting through the middle. So I bought this rug off of Amazon for 20 bucks and I'm just gonna cut it right at the top, right through that little emblem. And then here on the bottom of that same spot, that way they'll match up. So to make like a melting effect, I figure if I just like do these lines from the top all the way down to the bottom, and then here in the middle of the actual rug kind of expand and shrink some spots, it's gonna look kind of like melty and then match up the bottom and yeah hopefully that should work so here we go here i go cutting oh, here, here i go cutting again oh, oh. then do the same thing on the bottom side right in the same kind of spot in the middle of that design and ideally it should match up and yeah we're good so i have this giant frame that i made for that big old board rug plus uh the collab rug that I with curry goat so we're just gonna use that again and uh, my thought was that I would line the rug up on the top and just mark where the colors are with each color marker. I ended up just focusing on one color at a time and doing the red first. Also, yeah, I have to watch something constantly when I'm working, so <laughs> it's fine. I'm not. I don't. I'm, I don't have ADHD at all. So then I took the bottom of the rug and did the same thing and just marked off where the red would go and then drew the lines on the left and the right side kind of warpy and redid them and then here on the left we're gonna do a test run with the rug gun and here I actually did a test run before I did this and it worked fine but now looking at it, it like kind of tore holes in the monk's cloth but then when I went over it it looked like it was gonna work I looked on the back side and it was working well enough I'm like okay this this is this should work I don't know if it's because I'm using a different monk's cloth than I usually do or because I changed the rug gun from loop pile to cut pile and I messed it up somehow, but whatever. I figured it was going to work. It's working. We're fine. So I do it on the right side and you can see on this front side of the rug, it's looking like it's working pretty well, except for that I had to redo the top left because it was too wide for the rug. So I just redid that and then thickened up the lines there on the outside where I feel like it would like be pooling if it was liquid. Then I started in the middle and I kind of just, I kind of freehanded, I guess. I didn't follow the pattern that I made on the computer. I just started from the middle and just filled in kind of how I feel like it would be spilling, not spilling, but melting if it were liquid and then thickening up the spots where there was more room. Periodically, I had to re-tighten it and I was a little scared that because of that it wasn't like it was gonna be too wide for the rug But that's future Brian's problem Good luck future Brian. I hope you I hope you have fun with this one <laughs> So once I got like the rough design out there I thickened up the spots that like I said I think would be a little more thick that a little more room and started on the black and I actually ran out of the black I ran out of the red too in the middle and had to go to the store and grab more and I ran out of black right there and started on the white before going to the store again, but ran into a cute little problem. It's just a cute problem. I, I, it's so cute. Let me show you. So here on the back side, I tore a giant hole. And I thought maybe what I could do is do like a crumb coat of this rug glue and then put an another layer of the monk's cloth on the back and maybe go through both monk's cloth to fix them. We'll see. But with the crumb coat all done, oh, oh, wow, nice, 
falling crumb. Were you guys looking at my butt, you sickos? I was talking about the crumb that fell off. But before I test out and see if we can fix that hole, pass me on something to say. So, so are you saying you use Squarespace for sponsoring this video? Squarespace is a website where you can build websites. That seems like a very oversimplification. There's so, so many little things that Squarespace offers with your website, such as member exclusive areas, email campaigns, you can collect donations, social sharing buttons, a buttload of analytics, and a bunch of other tools to make your website great. So whether you're trying to sell a product, do educational courses, blog, whatever, they give you all the tools so that it will perform at its peak. That's a mountain. Whoa, look at the peak. That's you're so good. Um, so to talk about a couple of those things, like the members exclusive area, you can connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated member exclusive content. And you can manage your members, email them, talk to them, all in one easy to use platform. Squarespace, cool. Another thing I really like about Squarespace is their email campaigns. It doesn't matter if I have a list of a million people, you're only charged by the number of emails sent out, which is really cool. If there's anything you know about me is I like making a list of people. Sure. I feel like they've like, I feel like Squarespace has made it really easy for you to like connect with people and like build a strong community around whatever it is you're into. They have all the tools, including analytics. Literally, if you don't know you, who you like your community, it has the analytics to say, this is your targeting, your target market, target market. That's the word. And then also it will show you like how they're interacting with your content so you can like provide the best content for them, which in return, like will help build a bigger, stronger community. So whatever it is that you're doing, there's people out there that want to be part of it. And Squarespace is that community builder. So you can actually start building your website for free right now. And then when you actually decide to launch your website or buy a, a domain, whatever it is, be sure to go to squarespace.com backslash mood to get 10% off your first purchase. I think you can also use the coupon code SHMOOD at checkout. So cool. Go make whatever you do. And then a website makes it real. So cool. So I got that second layer of monk's cloth and I'm just going to stretch it over the frame and then I turn off the lights and put a light from the front to see if it's going to be good enough for me to like still follow the pattern and maybe we'll see. So I tried first on that spot with the giant hole and then I went on the left side a spot where the white would be to see if it's going to go through both layers of the monk's cloth. And uh, the one on the like the both layers of monk's cloth looks like looks like it's going to work. But the whole one, it's just, it's doing the same thing that I was doing with just one monk cloth where it's making holes rather than like kind of carpeting. So while I was brainstorming on how I was going to fix that, I have a new sheep shear I wanted to try out. And if you saw the video where I did the one half the collaboration I'm doing with Denzel, I was really stoked with the sheep shears because I just used my face razor to shave down the one I did for Denzel, this little uh, lion guy and it took like eight hours where the sheep shears gonna cut that in I don't know I could probably have done that entire rug in maybe five minutes I don't know but yeah so stoked for that also stoked for this collaboration I'll probably be doing the second half of it come April but I went over the shears the spot with the hole and it just doesn't really look like it's gonna work very well and I wanted to test and see if it would line up with the rug, and it did, but I don't like the red. I wish I would have done a different red. So I'm just going to clean up and start from scratch. So that's why this is a part one, because this didn't work like I wanted. And I don't know, you can look at this like a failure, like a waste of material and all that stuff. And like it was a waste, but I feel like as a creative, you can look at failure as just active problem solving. That's kind of what you do as an artist is you're constantly just trying to fix problems. So failure can either get you to stop or you can use it as a building block to be more creative. And that's what I'm going to decide to do is just use this sweet, sweet waste of time to uh, figure out how to better make this and either fix my rug gun or figure out what's wrong with the monk sloth. And that's what I'll be doing come part two, which will probably come soon. If I don't, you know, just fall asleep on this nice little rug for the rest of my life. I don't, I don't know.
Alright, so be sure to like and subscribe. Go ahead and hit that bell notification. And yeah, thanks so much for watching and thanks so much for our patrons.